For full episodes as they air, listen to Grant's Rants Hollywood Talk on Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, and blogtalkradio.com slash Grant's Rants. From the podcast, Grant's Rants Hollywood Talk, it's Grant's Rants Small Talk. Let the ranting begin. It's Grant's Rants from Reality T and AfterBuzzTV.com. And I'm here ranting by myself tonight. I did have a co-host lined up, but I realized that uh, she's on the West Coast and will be finishing the show quite late. And I have to be at work at 6 o'clock in the morning. So, you know, I'm trying to give myself a little bit of a break here. But... Without a doubt, Emma will be recapping with me next week. So, you know, it's something to look forward to. As for this week, you're stuck with me. And we're going to be talking about Season 8, Episode 5, Not Over It. And, um, wow, uh, this episode, is, it dipped a little bit for me. But it picked up at the end. They are following this classic Housewives model, the old days. Where it's like we see them going about their business for like the first 30 minutes. And then the last 10 to 15 minutes of the show, they'll like get together. It's like a get together, a dinner, a party. And then that's when they all come together and converse verge and fight and then the next episode the next 30 minutes they talk about what happened so i'm fine with like classic formats because this show really is in a rebuilding stage you know nick barbati who co-hosted with me the first week and that episode is up on youtube he um you know, he it was tweeting how basically there's really no storyline. And when I think about it, there really isn't. It's only Danielle, and then we're kind of watching these ladies get along. We're watching Siggy react to things. or watching Dolores react to things. But I'm still kind of okay with it for now, because I feel like we just had so little that even this looks like a lot. But it, I'm okay with it. Let's talk about it. I, I hear the highlights. So Margaret returns from Vegas, and uh, she uh, is she smells, which is always good to know. And uh, she, we learn more about her Lux brand, Lux for Less, and that it's boho, preppy, and whimsical all at the same time, of course. And um, Jody enters, and and Jody just can't wait to talk to Margaret. We have no idea who Jody is. We didn't see her last week at this purse party, but apparently she was there reporting back. Back to Margaret about what happened with Siggy humiliating uh, Melissa, and then Siggy and Dolores screaming at Danielle. And um, then we, later we learned that um, she wants to get products made from this factory in Milan. And of course, the only way to get things sped up is if she goes there in person. So of course, we're getting ready for this cast trip. We know that they do go to Milan later this year. So I was wondering how they were going to organically, and I'm using quotes, um, and, you know, roll out this cast trip because it's always, you know, pre-planned. But now I guess this is, I guess this is for Margaret to go with her pigtails to yell in Italian at factory workers in Milan to work faster on her her bags. I, I don't I don't know what the point of her going would be. I mean. It's a lot cheaper to make a Skype call, but okay, um, we'll go with that. So Dolores meets with her ex-husband and her son Frankie, and she talks about how Danielle is saying that Teresa only comes around for money and has no interest in anyone or anything. So she's repeating the rumor that Danielle was all too happy to tell Teresa in which apparently, allegedly, Dolores said this about Teresa, which I, I really don't know at this point. The more I think about it, I don't know if, how true that is. But anyway, Dolores is more hurt than anything else by the fact that Teresa is believing uh, Danielle and she is questioning if it's even something false. You know, Dolores, I recognize Dolores as being a loyal Italian girl from the neighborhood, a friend for life. I can understand why she would feel so offended. I would too, you know? I mean, I, I'm like a ride-or-die friend myself, so I would I would be pissed, especially someone like Danielle, you know, who she calls a pathological liar. I'm not going that far, but, you know, Danielle's messy, so, you know, you really got to give your long-term friend the benefit of the doubt. So I can understand why she, as a loyal person and a loyal friend, would not be too happy with that. 
So um, anyway, Gia and Teresa get together and they shop for Puerto Rico, shop for bathing suits. And I am really surprised with how mature this girl is, this Gia. You know, we've seen her go through a lot on this show. I mean, she's watched both of her parents go to prison with very much no being in the know and understanding exactly why and what it's about and that people aren't going away to camp like she's seen a lot more than me at her age so i give her a lot of credit um you know she she it's kind of funny how she talks like an adult she's like oh you know she's a good kid my other sister's a good kid but melania she's a good kid but she really needs discipline she said she really tries to push her boundaries and you know Teresa. she basically was like Teresa, you're not strict i mean she didn't call her by her first name but like i feel like i almost feel like we're dealing with an old soul and Teresa's kind of consulting her for advice in this scene i don't know even she said i don't know how my daughter like my daughter is conservative but I mean, she is in a, in a way, and I kind of like that. Like Team Gia is almost looking like Team uh, Brianna on OC. Like it's like these crazy moms who get themselves in all these disastrous messes, and the kids who have just been there, lived through it all since they were kids, are just like really again. So I'm like, I kind of like this girl. I think we need a little bit more consulting with Gia. I, I need a little bit more of that. So that was good. Over at the Gorga restaurant, they put up a new sign, and that was about it. Uh, except for some pictures uh, that Teresa uh, is getting all upset, and she says that uh, Melissa is getting on her nerves because one of the pictures, Joe has his face covered. I mean, you know, I guess, it, you know, <sighs> Teresa is pushing it. Now we can see why Melissa. And, and Melissa's, you know, guilty of it too with the, remember that letter, congratulations on your newly redone home and all that. I mean, now we can see though why these two started off in such a poor place because this is how these two were introduced to one another as just being, you know, I, I don't even want to say shade throwers because it's not really shade as much as it's just like snippety comments. You know, I don't do well with comments, so I don't blame her and the either of them for, de- for reacting to comments, but Teresa has to cut it out. Because it's too it's too uh, fragile of a situation to be making so much co- many, so many comments all the time. So anyway, Teresa reminds her sister in law that she only is a Gorga by blood. There's this, all this this pride of the Gorga last name, which is fine. But you know, of course, Teresa has to let Melissa know. Melissa storms out. There's a random glass turned upside down, like or on its side. I guess that's supposed to be like. You know, it reminds me of like the meme where there's like a small earthquake and it's like, we will rebuild. And there's a white resin chair tilt o- tilted over. I'm like, okay, sure. I guess it's, I guess it's intense over there, you know, that Melissa has to walk out. So then Teresa and Joe talk a little bit more. And I swear I saw in like the, the curtains behind Teresa, there was a person sitting down at a bench. And I was like, I wonder if that's her just like leaving the scene and like taking a seat outside. I don't know. I couldn't make out who it was, but I like to think that it was just Melissa after she wrapped her scene. Hmm. Who knows? So anyway, Later, Teresa apologizes for overreacting, and she says that it all came from her feeling like Melissa was, quote, knocking her parenting with that one comment. Here we go. This is what I mean. The comments about her, you know, letting her kids get away with murder. But Melissa stood behind it, and even Joe did. You know, like, everyone's telling her, you know, like, she was lenient with her daughter. She still is. And, you know, I think it was good that Joe backed up his wife with that. And it's, it's, um, it's accurate. You know, it's accurate. But anyway, I do understand Teresa, though. She said, you know, I'm basically a single mom. Like, please don't comment on my parenting. But I think that, like I said this last week on this recap, you know, you, Melissa and Joe and, and Teresa are kind of all hands on deck with these these girls while Joe is gone. So, you know, I feel like they should be able to co-parent, especially if that's what was said they were going to do. If Teresa doesn't want that, then she needs to say that. But I, I think it's okay for Melissa to make a comment. It's another thing if she takes action and she starts disciplining the kids. But it's okay to plant that seed, but I think that's all you can really do. I'm not a parent. I don't know. This is just what I think I would be comfortable with. I don't know. Maybe I need like a dog. And then if I had a dog, I could use that as like my parenting expertise. I don't know. I'm just I'm just giving it to you from Grant's Rant's perspective. I don't really know. But anyway. 
uh, Melissa and Teresa, they're filling Joe in on every detail that's been going on in New Jersey this season. Uh, Joe is really the talk to. I don't know why, but he is. And they talk about how Dolores uh, apparently made comments about Teresa, and it came from Danielle, of course. And Teresa says that she doesn't believe that Dolores would say these things, but the way Danielle told her, she believes it. So I'm like, oh, so she does. But I thought she was finally like saying, you know, I really don't believe Dolores real talk, but this is what I was told. But no, she's saying, I really don't believe her that she would say it. But the way it was told to me. Yeah, I do. I was like, OK, I think that's really a lousy thing to say about Dolores. I thought she was finally kind of coming around and being like, you know, OK, let me give my friend of 20 years the benefit of the doubt versus my friend of two minutes, Danielle. Oh, well. I don't know what to say about that, other than I think it's ridiculous. But um, over at the strip mall restaurant, the tasting begins. And when we return, we're going to talk about everything that happened to this tasting, including some, uh, some uh, more commentary, but this time between two other ladies in a moment. You're listening to Grant's Rants. Subscribe and spread the word. There are a lot more rants to come. Listen anytime on all major podcasting platforms. And now, back to the show. And I'm back talking to myself about the Real Housewives of New Jersey. And, uh... We're going to take a look at the strip mall restaurant. I can't not call it that. Um, the tasting. Like, I can't stand these tastings on these shows because they have these things. We had to sit to this before. First of all, they have this tasting. They showed one dish and they showed everybody eat it. But, you know, the, as far as it being a tasting, it was pointless because we didn't get any feedback. We don't know really what they're serving. I mean, it says on the sign, it's like uh, Gorga's homemade pizza and something. And pizza and pasta. So, okay, I mean, but, you know, if this is legit, like, I want to know more about the tasting versus just everybody talking about each other. This is what drives me crazy sometimes. Like, I know I'm here for the drama, and I don't always care for the fluff, but if you're gonna tell me it's a tasting, like, you know, let's carry that out. I don't know. Maybe, am I just being, like, reading, am I just wanting too much from this show? I don't know. I've always been tough on Jersey. So Melissa finds Danielle to be misunderstood. In fact, one of the most misunderstood people ever. And uh, I still want to say that Melissa acts like she's all brand new with Danielle. But when they have that reunion, reunion, the second season, and then that's when Danielle asked about Teresa if she had, had acknowledged her nephew's birth. You know, that was when it came out that Melissa got dirt from Teresa from Danielle. So why are we not acknowledging this? You know, I guess she says, oh, I only, Melissa says in the press, she only met Danielle in person at the housewarming party that we never saw at Danielle's house. So, I mean, maybe they were communicating online, but they do have a prior relationship. They're not brand new, but what do I know? Anyway. Uh, so Teresa's father is a little, yeah, did you catch this? Teresa's father is a little, uh, I'm just going to say creepy. I'm just going to say it. Just a little creepy towards Margaret about the blonde comments, like looking her up and down. Like, you know, I, I know he's going through a tough time, but it was a little strange. I just want to say that. Like, it was a little odd. I wasn't okay with that moment, but, you know, whatever. Um, weird. So everyone asks why Frank lives with Dolores. Of course, they were talking about Dolores before she's there, and Danielle's kind of ringleading this. Danielle uh, brings up, again, what Dolores said about Teresa, but she spins it. This is what I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comments with this episode what you think of this point here. She says, oh, you know, Dolores did say that, quote, Teresa is in a place where she only cares about money. Well, that's a little different than she doesn't care about anybody or anything else other than money. I think that could be taken many different ways. I mean, you know, couldn't Dolores just be saying, oh, you know, she is just trying to pay off all this money. She's only concerned about money right now. Like, it's the big thing. Like, she's on her own and Joe's away and they owe money and she has to, you know, do all this stuff. And I mean, they did supposedly they did pay off a lot, but I'm sure they've got plenty of fees and lawyers and all this stuff that they have to take care of. So... 
in a way, it is accurate that Teresa, probably her biggest concern is money right now. So if it was put that way, that's one thing. But if it was put as uh, to attack her character, that's another. But I read between the lines on this because, Danielle, I'm watching. I love you, but I'm watching. You know, it's, it's like I don't really trust her, but I'm entertained. Well, Siggy doesn't see Dolores saying any of these things. Whatever Dolores, whatever Danielle claims, Siggy does stand up for Dolores. And then Dolores and Frank enter, and she snubs Danielle, and she's super cold to Margaret. She just kind of, like, holds her hands, like, acknowledges her, only because they probably caught eye contact, and it's like, you can't ignore eye contact. But I noticed, like, she did everything she could not to look at Danielle, but she did embrace her fiancé. So, I don't know. I, what I would do in that situation is I'd probably just give like a wave. Just acknowledge the other person is in the room, especially if you're acknowledging their fiance. It's not like you can pretend that she's a no-show. I don't know. I, I, I'm big about acknowledging people's presence. Even if you don't like the person, let them know, yep, I'm here and I'm not afraid to not look at you and I'll be in the room and you'll have to deal with me as I'll have to deal with you. You know what I mean? Like, I like Dolores and I'm going to say a little bit more about her later, but that moment, I think, was kind of cheap on her part. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna be tough, own it. Just own it. So, anyway, what else can I say? So Dolores tells Joe. So this is they're at two tables. They're like two tables of people, one side versus the other. And Dolores, everyone's filling in Joe Gorga and all this stuff. Dolores says that Danielle is up to her old tricks, and Siggy tells Joe that Margaret uh, came for her through the back door. I'm like, what? Like, okay, I guess. She also was trying to, like, make a, a housewives moment that didn't work when she was asking Joe for sharp knives, one in which she can give to Margaret so she can continue to stab her in the back. And I don't know, I was getting secondhand embarrassment from Siggy, especially with that. Like, what are you even trying to prove? Like, what? Melissa thinks everyone needs to just cut Margaret some slack with the um, the whole wreath ceremony. She's like, well, you know, you really did miss something, but, you know, you got to let it go. So at least she didn't write it off as pointless. But, the, yeah, I mean, this wreath ceremony, though, is just, you know, come on. The whole, this, everything that happened to Miami, like it's episode five, like, save it for the reunion. What's new? You know, what's new? So Siggy refuses, flat out refuses to forgive Margaret. It's not happening. She's not about it. It's, it's just, I, I don't know why, you know, you'd think this one, the relationship expert would just be like, okay, sometimes you have to let things go and write people off as opposed to just carrying a grudge. But again, what do I know? So Danielle is listening in on the whole thing. And I love it. She's like, you're so loud. I can hear every word. I thought she was going to turn around like Daniel Staub season one. Like, oh, so you're going to talk about me really, bitch? But she did not want to get involved. Unlike Margaret, who is like dying to get over there. Margaret is earning this paycheck. She's so into the show. And I have come to like her even more, despite still questioning the pigtails. But anyway, Margaret goes over and says, are we still talking about this? I think that was the voice of the audience, pretty much. And Siggy yells, I'm not over it! And then she sticks out her tongue at Margaret. The whole thing is weird. Siggy insults Margaret's brand as in her stuff. She deems her merchandise as China stuff. (laughs) Like, (laughs) and Margaret's like, everything's from China. Who cares? And, like, I guess that's true. I mean... I don't know. But then to add insult to injury, Siggy says that she gave it to Dolores and Dolores hated the product and hated the merchandise and thought it was cheap or whatever. And then so, of course, Margaret calls her a puppet. And, you know, it is a little, I mean, there's one thing to be said about loyalty. And you know what? I guess she really is loyal to her friend. She'll just say whatever she's got to say, you know, to be able to back up her friend. But I mean, you know, there is a point where you do end up kind of looking like a puppet, though. And I don't ever want to be like that. You know, I mean, I don't know what, I think maybe I would just like roll my eyes, just be like, whatever. I don't think we should be having this conversation. I'm not going to attack your business. Whatever. Like, you know how I feel about you. That's probably what I would do. But again, the, these women are like living under a microscope with recording the show. So it's hard to be like sit on the sidelines and say like what I would say in a fight. You know, when you're in the moment, it happens. It's just what happens, happens. So Teresa cuts Dolores off. Dolores is about to explain 
Siggy again, supposed to explain this girl, but both are really angry, and Dolores doesn't like how Margaret treats Siggy. So I get it. Uh, but this was the first time we saw fire between Siggy and Dolores. Oh, Dolores and Teresa, excuse me. So I hate to see this friendship crumble over the show, but it wouldn't be the first one. I mean, when you think of all the broken, dead friendships left in the wake of Real Housewives of New Jersey, there's a lot. So Siggy um, and Margaret, they are, they, oh yeah, apparently Siggy says to Margaret that she is one of the ugliest human beings for making fun of her. I'm trying to think of like what point was it? She was looking, she was making fun of her at just because she was soggy. Was that what it was? I'm like, just the whole, I feel like everyone's been making fun of Margaret all season with the pigtails. So I'm like trying to remember the last time someone made fun of Siggy, other than just like the obvious. Like, she's like freaking out and needs, like, you know, I, I guess she claims she needs to get her hormones checked or whatever. Like, other than the erratic behavior, like, what? It, what's the deal? Like, I don't know, how is how is Margaret really attacking her? I don't really get it. But um, Margaret, the whole time that Siggy keeps talking to her, Margaret looks like she's ready to, like, burst out laughing. And the look on her face is always constantly like, are you serious? Like, her mouth is agape. And she's just looking at Siggy. Like, what? Like, are you kidding me? Like, huh? Like, the whole thing, she's so confused. I think we're all confused. So Siggy then gets up and then screams that it's boring and then makes all these gestures behind Margaret. What are you doing? Like, what are you doing? I, I just, I don't even know what to say at this point. Siggy is a mess. And I don't know. She's got her Twitter fans, you know, and I, I don't dislike those two, but she definitely has her Twitter fans. And, and I, I, mean, I don't know. Dolores and Siggy are just, they're just their own they're like their own show. You either you either want to watch or you don't. But anyway, Danielle stops Dolores from leaving. And here we are in the last four minutes of the show. And she asks where her Dolores' honey is instead of her ex-husband, who's always there. But I will say, Dolores handled this exactly as I would. She laughed. She, well, she didn't really laugh. But she had a big smile on her face because she wasn't going to show she was down then she stormed across the restaurant and got in danielle's face and she asked if she had a problem with her relationship i like it she confronts her straight on then dolores smiles in danielle's face i like it she's completely unbothered she's strong but direct and she's getting down into it she she could have easily just rolled her eyes and walked out that front door with her ex-husband but i like that she got up in danielle's face and showing her teeth a little bit of course danielle eats this up but you know i i, I like that she did that so danielle just claims that she wants to meet the the new boyfriend she asks if anyone's met him again alluding to the fact that this is a made-up relationship which is ridiculous and she then she asks about their living arrangements she i don't know if she plays stupid or what but she's like are you living together i don't get it do you do you and your boyfriend and frank all live in the same house but it is a little odd because earlier in the episode when she came in she said that her boyfriend david makes care packages for her son and her ex-husband which i guess is just a bunch of undercooked red meat because i don't know what the hell it was so I, I don't know what, what the care packages are. The whole show was interesting. I'm glad that it boiled over in the end, quite literally. So I need to come up with a hashtag for this show. Why don't we do hashtag strip mall tasting? Um, I, I just, I'm going to get to keep that going. Uh, why not? So if you want to tweet me about this show, use the hashtag uh, strip mall tasting. And yeah, if you're interested in this show, you might be interested even more. If you haven't listened to, I know many of you do, but if you haven't, listen to the main podcast, Grants Rants Hollywood Talk. It's a different co-host each episode. We're talking hot topics, reality TV, and a profile on that co-host. There's a lot of good stuff. I planned the remaining episodes for this year and you've got good guests some good, two panels are coming up so definitely tell your friends about grants friends hollywood talk i'll be back next week with emma from the oc and we're going to be talking about episode number six already of the real housewives of new jersey i love you for listening <laughs> This has been Grant's Rants Small Talk. Want more? Join the full conversation on Grant's Rants Hollywood Talk Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Blog Talk Radio, and in the links below.